We are going to discuss an article that recently appeared in Nature. It is a brutal truth of which we should all be aware, but since I haven't addressed this topic directly for some time, let's get a bit of background. You might know about Dr. John Christie, one of the top atmospheric scientists who clearly saw and reported, among other things, solar effects on the climate that were not too popular with the mainstream climate change group. And he received harsh treatment from colleagues, his institution, and even friends, even as he stood in a crowd of physicists seeing and reporting the same, some of which stood in front of Congress begging for science to overrule politics in vain. Another example is Lennart Benson who was not only the receiver of threats, but as others were losing jobs and funding and colleagues over verifiable science, he received some of the most disgusting treatment from the climate cult. Perhaps you are new to this or have forgotten about it since the current administration in the U.S. is picking apart climate science in a way with which I do not agree is correct. However, with that admission must also come the admission that it is merely a taste of their own medicine. I advise you to search online about climate gate or climate McCarthyism. That's a good one. You can also include some of those terms at the bottom with your climate searches. And while we are on that topic... Cosmology and astrophysics have fallen prey to a similar herding and dogmatic view. Still no dark matter, nothing but observations to the contrary, and an impossible gauntlet to publish on that fact while the bar for hypothetical and forelooking dark matter manuscripts appears to be buried beneath the floor. The issue is funding. Nature of the universe is almost as important to our society as climate change, although that closeness comes from the billions we need to spend on scopes and satellites that is barely overmatched by the climate bill. There is an easy way to get funding. Be positive about dark matter. Blame humans for every bit of what is happening in the climate. Many of you know my personal experiences there as well. Our solar earthquake trigger passed two peer reviews before a journal felt comfortable publishing it. Obviously, things are a bit easier on that front now with dozens and dozens published. But also, my friends from school with masters in weather and climate science have been in the position of people described in today's most recent article. Some still are to this day. I became aware of this article because at least one of them participated in it, and one of the scariest things about being in that world is your requirement of loyalty to your principal investigator and to the goal. High-profile papers lead to funding, and funding leads to better things for those scientists and their underlings. Please put weight on all the things listed here, actually, except for number two, which is a dismal reminder of how lazy so many people are south of 40 spins around our star. Sack up, kids. Welcome to Earth. But back to the real problem, because when I saw the high-profile thing, what I read in my head was likely to be published by the big journals, which means it must follow the dogma, follow the code, and support the life, work, and ideas of the kings of science in charge of those journals. Indeed. Over half of those doing the majority of the work, trust me, had their outcomes specifically dictated to them and felt pressure to produce them, which is exactly what my friends described to me was happening to them during their preparation for the last IPCC report when their first draft was thrown in the trash by their PI for being truthful. This is a cancer on science. I can also tell you 100% it's just as bad in medicine and pharma. I have helped put a biomimetic antimicrobial through the FDA, and I understand the stranglehold held over the agency and the practitioners. Horrifying. But glimmers of hope do emerge from time to time, here in the form of the most unlikely and yet most respected houses, emeritus professor calling climate science science fiction. Their cloud studies demonstrating that it's not just the last 20 years our models couldn't produce, but we have it wrong going into the future. And that was before Yale's ticking cold climate bomb ready to explode any year now was released as well. So, below this video you can find a link to today's very sad article in Nature, and to our video Energy from Space a key component being missed in the climate realm. Both are worth a look. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.